Why are Nirvana and Pearl Jam now considered classic rock? Is classic rock something with firm boundaries or does it evolve with time? I want to show you the interview I did with Mike Levine, the bassist from Triumph, where he talks about this subject, as well as the influence MTV had when it came to music videos and more. This interview was done for my documentary, What is Classic Rock? If you want to see the full documentary, the links are available below. Hey, by the way, Daniel's a good guy, okay? He's a really good guy. He knows his stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a lot of classic rock stations are now calling grunge classic rock. Does that sit well with you? Um, I really don't care. <laughs> I mean, they have a job to do as a radio station. So um, as the classic rock generation starts to die, <laughs> which it's happening, uh, as, as I know classic rock, um, they have to appeal to a, yet another audience. So... Um, you know, Nirvana and, uh, and those bands, you know, they, they had a lot of good offerings. I'm not saying they're bad bands or anything. It's a lot better than what's out there now. But um, different kind of music. Um, it's classic in, in the sense that there were big hits and big bands. So uh, they, they fit. Do you think just, just the sound-wise, just as far as the sound's concerned, hmm. do you think that it fits the mold of like the blues-based classic rock or is it a separate thing? Uh, Complicated question, I know. It is. Uh, I would say it's a separate thing. Um, it's, it's, it's sure blues-based, but uh, from an audio dynamics point of view and a chord change point of view uh, and a playing point of view, it's different. And I liked it because it was different. At first I went, oh, what's that? And then yeah, I got into it and went, wow, that's not so bad because those guys could play. And that was the key for me, that... Uh, um, a, a great band with great songs and great players is going to be a great band, without question. So if you look at the Nirvanas and the Pearl Jams and all the Seattle-based bands that, that came out, those were good bands. You know, there wasn't a bad, bad one among them, in my mind. They were all good bands. It's just a question they were playing a different style of music. Like, you couldn't compare Nirvana or Pearl Jam to Aerosmith or Triumph or, or any of Bon Jovi or any of the bands of the, of, of the quote unquote classic, classic hard rock scene. But they, they had their own niche. Rock is a very important word in classic rock. Classic in and of itself is just a word to say, okay, if you look in the dictionary, it probably says something that people hold dearly or hold up or something. I don't know. But when you put classic with rock, it means, to me anyway, bands, artists, that, that of their time, they were the best of breed. You could include Nirvana and Pearl Jam because they've kind of paid their dues. Uh, they're hitting the point where I think as radio looks at it, you know, every 20 years there's a new set of uh, acts that belong in their format. So, yeah, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, uh, all those bands that made great music, had great songs, played great. They deserve to be there. I would say, you know, classic bands, you know, that, that were successful, uh, not necessarily superstar successful, but star successful, and uh, with great songs and great musicians, really, that's where I class it as, as classic rock. So, if, like we talked about before, if you go back to the late 60s, you had Zeppelin and Purple and Hendrix and all these great, great artists and playing great music and great performances and great shows and great fans on top of it. Um, and then you, everybody else followed on uh, from those guys. They were the pioneers. MTV did a lot for a lot of different acts, but um, the acts really were already big, most of them. And uh, the issue MTV had is nobody made videos, so there wasn't any videos for them to play. Uh, we were lucky enough that we had three or four in the bank that we had made to use for TV commercials. So, um, you know, we became one of the most played bands on MTV. Peter Gabriel had tons. Uh, um, I know a lot of people say that MTV really killed rock and roll, but it's not true. And they actually built rock and roll with the triumphs of the world, the Bon Jovis, the Guns N' Roses. So um, they were an integral part of, of radio television, uh, press, media, and touring. 
uh, they just became part of it as they grew because initially MTV wasn't much you know they're on a couple of cable stations really and then they, they managed to get a US wide distribution so it's a it's an interesting point but uh, they were I was not a big fan of MTV actually because you know to me music was theater of the mind that's like records everybody drew their own pictures and once you put a, uh, a visual to your music that's not like a live performance, for example, uh, then nobody's thinking on their own. They, you know, all of a sudden the, the music, it's there in front of them. So the theater, the mind went away. The music drove the culture. Like the rock stars were the rock stars. They, had to, they were the image makers. They were the people that people listened to. So the fans would pay attention to what they were doing because everybody lived for rock and roll and music. Now, you know, music's like free and nobody cares. <laughs> right? I mean, honestly, that's the case. Once upon a time, music drove two generations of, of people with, with their beliefs, their, how they ate, how they dressed, uh, what their lifestyle was like. You know, they go to a show once a week. Now, you know, people go to show once a year or once every two months or once every six months, you know, and everybody would buy a new record. They'd line up at the record store to buy it. Uh, so there was influence. Music influenced people's lives. Making music is, uh, you know, that was a really fun part, you know, being writing and being in the studio. Uh, we were kind of lucky because there were only three of us. So there wasn't a big political scene going on. Well, I want to do this and you want to do that and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We had a simple democracy, two out of three wins. <laughs> and that vote, you know, I lost a lot of votes. Gil lost a lot of votes. Rick lost a lot of votes over the years. But uh, the, it made you go back and, and work harder and look harder at your stuff and what you're doing and everybody else's stuff. So Rick would bring a song in and we go and I go, that's a piece of garbage, Rick. <laughs> that's just not good enough. You know, and you go, oh, I think it's great. Well, give it to us and we rework it a little bit and see if it was acceptable at that point. Uh, and we all went through that. And, and Gil and Rick did most of the writing and I did most of the criticizing. I was, I, I was the guy that rebuilt the songs, basically. In your mind, where's the border between heavy metal and hard rock? I don't, you know, I never really define that. I mean, if you could call borderhead heavy metal, right? I mean, that's, there's no question, but um, uh, status quo, you could call heavy metal. It's just heard REO Speedwag is opening for status quo in England on the last status quo tour, which I had no idea they were touring, but... That's going to be an interesting package. I wouldn't want to be REO <laughs> opening for them. But, uh, back to your question. I, we were all lumped together in the same, from a media point of view, we were always just lumped together as that um, kind of, well, you're, you're heavy metal or you're hard rock or you're this or you're that. Um, but you were all part of it. The best part of it is let's, we were always referred to as a, uh, all the bands as a, uh, kind of underground, non-starter thing. Meanwhile, everybody's going around sell, selling out arenas and having a great time and selling millions of records. So it's like, it wasn't exactly a niche market. For my two cents worth, I think the, uh, the music today is, can't even compare to the music of the, you know, mid-70s mid, mid to mid-80s. I mean, that was, that was fun, it was rock and roll, it was technique, there were guitar solos on records.